and we're live with episode unlucky number 13 whoop, whoop. of the legend of heroes trails in the sky sc missing exhibit blah 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 esport uh okay to the left to the east block woo oh i should probably upgrade upgrade the equipment for our for for the for the lovely lads Do, 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 do. Before that, we're gonna upgrade the shop by Olivier. Yes, I have the heavy cestus. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Does that mean what's his name comes in? I should. Okay. I'm going to buy two more. I'm pretty sure it's telling me that I have... Because I don't know if it means... Equip. Interesting. It says I have two in my inventory. But, uh... I should probably give him this then. Anyway, equip. Right? This draw- Okay, so this is better. Good, good, good. And then we have a double arch defense and uh, thingy up for our tanky boy. Or mint. Um, Zen. Defense 3. Attack 3. Uh... <sighs> hmm. Hit one. Mute. Mm. Could go for petrify. Petrifaction just sounds. Ah, mute sounds better. Zuck meta. We got Titanic Roar! Woo! Mm. And I believe it was last episode where I was just like, "What? What's going on with this? Why? Why doesn't let me? Why doesn't have uh, one of the?" Because look. EP cut three. Right. Gives five. Plus three. That's eight. Plus three. That's eleven. Plus two. That's fifteen. <laughs> Plus another two. That's seventeen. I have seventeen. But one of them is like. Thing. Anyway. That is neither here nor there. Olivier. Hmm. Defense two. Uh, 
Wait, I should give- Oh, I don't- I think- I think Tina has it. Hold on. Nope, she doesn't have it. Okay, good. Um... Of guns, cannons, and crossbows. Right? Okay. Oh boy. This is uh, chaotic. Anyway. We need to go to the east block. No, that's the west block. I apparently can't read. We need to go to east block for like a billion and one reasons, but I can't read. Or... Not read. I mean, no, no. no. I definitely can't read. But, um... I need to visit Anton. Do, 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 do. Anton, my boy! You should see me yawning an awful lot while I'm trying to pour my heart out to you. If you're a friend, suffer with me. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> Yawn could weather today again. Mm. Now. Wait. Please come to our museum. East block near the landing port. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I was like, what the flying, huh? No, 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 that, that makes sense, okay. And... I know that thing to the museum director. Apparently, they're looking into whether or not it's something the museum can hold on to, so I'm having... Wonder while they check it out. Oh, 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 okay, that's Jimmy. Good, good, good. Hello there, how can I help you? Better yet, how can we help you? We're with the Bracer Guild, sir. Oh, excellent. I'll so make someone to come soon. Let's waste no time getting down to business. Yeet. Yeah, sure. So what was stolen? About that. Did you notice anything off here? Off? This is the airship gallery, right? Hey, now you mention it, something seems to be missing. You're right, Estelle. There was a portrait of the Arce on this wall, as I recall. Now you mention it, Chloe. I do remember something like that being here. How could I forget? I saw the portrait myself while touring the capital. <laughs> Guess we know why you called us now. The portrait of the RSA was stolen, wasn't it? Precisely that. It was there this morning, but around noon or so, I noticed that it was gone. This card is on the wall in his place. Fuck's sake. Oh, beauteous princess and her loyal companions. The image of the proud white falcon has fallen into my hands. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you, Bublunk. Should you seek it, then answer my challenge. The first key is in the resident of the age general. Search the onlooker of time. Sigh him again. <laughs> Our rivalry burns brighter still. Yeah, sounds like Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, all right. You guys told me about him, but I thought you were exaggerating. You already know who the criminal is. Now that's what I call reassuring. I have every confidence to crack this case. We will let you down. We'll be back before you know it. Uh... <sighs> all right. Open up the open up the thing. Well, what's this? Uh, Sanctum Gate. Yes, this is the. Yeah, okay, we need to open it. <laughs> the missing exhibit. Let's go. Grant to West Block. <sighs> Fuck it. Can someone tell Blue Blanc to stop stealing shit? Those spies continues to do this, by the way. I'm, I'm hoping this isn't like a thing we have to go through in in, in um, Crossbell as well. But knowing me, I'm gonna have to deal with this nonsense. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Next to the. Th You ain't getting a pizza from me. <laughs> What's up, dude? Uh, second floor.
Go to the second floor and examine the grandfather clock. Uh, it's going good. I'm confused as I'm trying to find a grandfather clock. Oh, the... I'm trying to find the grandfather clock that's right there in front of me and I can't see it. <laughs> hmm, so the H general is probably General Morgan. In that case, is this the onlooker of time? I'd say it's likely. We'll need to check inside. Still, and ask to receive permission from the owners of the house to rescue the clock. Upon inspection, they found a card stuck to the back. The second key is in the city. Seek the symbol on the perched crown. Okay, next go to blah blah blah. Uh, south block, uh, back end of Bird Fountain. Okay. As we thought, my, to think something like that was in this house. Well, this guy's in the type to harm people who aren't involved in his weird plan, so don't worry. Best to close up tight at night just in case there's any more mischief, though. Yes, of course. Yes, we'll be careful. Alright, shall we continue? Alright, I'm gonna go look for a bird fountain, and I'm just not gonna see it because I'm blind, can't read, and just overall a massive derp. The symbol perched on the ground, huh? This white falcon symbol seems suspect to me. This bird is the symbol of Lobero, so it, should, it would stand out. Let's have a look. There's a card stuck on the base of the iron fence. The third key is in the foreign manse. Examine the will of the blue knight. And we're stuck. The third key is in the foreign man to examine the will of the blue knight. Alright, we got it. And what does the blue knight mean? Is he talking about the royal guard? They do certainly wear blue uniforms. Mm, I think not. It says the foreign man, so I, I don't think the royal guard makes sense. More than I think else, it wouldn't be beautiful, so we should try something else. Uh, is that right? Well, it is coming from someone similar, so I guess maybe I should listen to the warning here? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, now we have to continue the story to continue this side quest because, of course, I do. Dude, you should have seen me earlier. I went. I needed to go east, and I went west. That—that's how the stream started. <laughs> it started with me not being able to tell east from west. Uh, no, that's Erebonia. We need... We need uh, Zin the Immovable, right? Yep. That's Calvert. Hey, how goes? Oh, Zin, holy crap. Was it time in Liberoville again? Uh, something like that. Alright. A fun of the meeting. Thought I'd say hello to Elsa, and I have something I need to talk to her about. Is she in? Well, I haven't seen her leave, so I guess she's around. Oh, who's with you? Gotta ask you no policy. Oh, they're helping me with some guild work. I'm going to introduce them to Elsa. Oh, well, okay. If they're with you, Zin, I guess I can let them in. Do 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 do. So welcome to the Calvardian Embassy. Oh, do keep in mind that the Embassy Hall is Calvert soil. Calvert and Libero are friends, but still, keep your nose clean, eh? You hear that, Olivia? And again, my heart is assaulted with arrows. How little trust you have in me. <laughs> uh, look, if she had no trust in you, she wouldn't bring you. <laughs> it's just a soft, gentle reminder to not be yourself. <laughs> mm. Ooh, magnificent. Wow, this is the Calvardian Embassy. I didn't expect it to be quite so fancy. And yet, it's a bit exotic as well. I really like it. Well, quite a few people from even farther east have settled in Calvert. You know, they've had an impact on our culture, too. Anyway, Elsa's office is the furthest room on the second floor. Alrighty. Okay, I need to find a library, apparently? Uh, first set of stairs, room on my right. 
Holds the Dark Knight series. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's a card trap between the pages. The door has already been opened. Join the dance of the Valorous. Oh, look what I found. Oh, I get it. I guess it's technically considered Republican territory. It absolutely is a foreign man's. And the Blue Knight is a character from the novel, I think. Jeez, he sure is detail-oriented. Anyway, I, I got a feeling that this next one's the last of them. Dance of the Valorous. Well, now, where could that be? Sixteen. Boop, boop, boop. Seventeen. 18 19 20 21 and the finale Achievement unlocked blue knight Anyway, now we can go meet with Elsa. Wait, can I leave and come back? Hmm. Apparently I can. Cool. So, uh, we're just gonna do that then. <laughs> huh? It's unlocked. The entrance here should be kept locked as long as there's no show like the martial arts store. In which case, it seems this is our goal then. Alright, let's get inside. Woo. The Grand Arena, kind of nostalgic. Feels like we were here just yesterday. <sighs> just standing here as we were calling the admiring group of the audience. You were invited to the castle after you won the martial arts competition, right Estelle? I wish I could have joined you on the field. <laughs> Thinking about it, I'm still pretty amateurish. But you know, once this whole thing is cleared up, I'd like to take part in, the, in next year's martial arts competition. Test my own ability for one. Now that sounds like Cassie's daughter to me. I'd like to join in on the action too. I uh, don't really feel like I'd have a chance against you, Zane. Well then, I shall sing from the seats to cheer you on, Estelle. I will serenade my love for you as mightily as I can. Pass. <laughs> oh, yes. The big bad. 
Monsters! This feels reminiscent of some old Colosseum games. The setting is certainly apt. It's a pity we lack an audience. Here they come. Let's see. Fire is the big week. Mm. Mm. Let's just nuke it. Art. Man's got nothing. All right. Mm. Oh, that's... Spiral Flare. Damn, it didn't kill. Rip, Zin's gonna get frozen. Oh, Zin and Estelle, that's great. Craft, chain two. Mm. Literally no point in unfreezing them. Mm. And now, craft, quick draw. Learn true comet. Interesting. What? What was that? It was like a magic trick. What a fabulous display. He has a fitting rival indeed. Oh, oh I, I need to like yeet my local like public library because I keep him on me. He's even weirder than I thought he'd be. Well, whatever. Let's check the contents. Yep. It's the painting. Portrait of Arsay. There's a card stuck to the bottom of the box. My princess, my rival, and brave bracers. Did you enjoy the show I prepared for your arrival? <laughs> As I do not wish to upset the mood of our main role, it is time for the supporting actors to take their bows. I hope you will look forward to our next chance meeting. <laughs> Some chance meeting. I wish you'd cut it out. But there's something curious about it. Main role, supporting actors. What does that mean? Now that you mention it. Ah, screw it. Let's go return the photo to the archives. <laughs> I mean, I miss Joshua. <laughs> Where the hell is the dude? Okay, thank you enough, bracers. Still, why would that phantom thief fellow steal a portrait of the RSA? It certainly is lovely, but it's really nothing more than a simple portrait. It holds little monetary value. Well, he doesn't really care about value so much as he cares about pulling off a good prank or two. And it's probably our fault that the museum got wrapped up in the his latest one. Sorry for putting you through all this. Ha, no need to apologize. It wasn't your doing. If anything, I'm very pleased with how you handled this. Excellent work. Hey. 
Estelle's not wrong. It is our doing. It's because we're in Gronsol that Blue Blanc decided to, you know, do a bad. You know, I'm curious what's available in in in, in the um, department store. Oh no. Ingredients. Defense plus 15. Prevents freeze. I wish they had like a defense plus 15 prevents everything. Okay, we got two. Ooh. Movement plus two question. Interesting how it's the, the second effect is just question mark, question mark, question mark. And it doesn't even let us ask. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Alright, absolutely pointless. Blah, blah, blah. Suffer with me? No, don't suffer. Anyway, now we got. Okay, now that I've closed this, let me close out of the missing exhibit. Alright, um. This should be the ambassador's office, shall we? Say hello to Elsa. Doctor. Alright, let me introduce you. Mm -hmm. Yes, come in. Pardon us, Elsa. Why, Zin! Zin Vathik. Hello, hello, come in. Last I heard you'd return to Calvert. What's an old dog like you doing back here in Gronzo? Well, uh, well, let's just say this old dog had a trick or two more to show off. I'll likely be in Libero for a while. That's to be expected of an A-rank bracer, I suppose. You never let up, do you? So who's this with you? Um, pleasure to meet you, ma'am. I'm Estelle Bright of the Bracer Guild. These are, um, assistants. Olivier Lenheim and Chloe Rins. A pleasure, Ambassador. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ambassador. Pleasure is mine. I'm Elsa- I swear I need to find the actual pronunciation of this la of her last name. I'm not even going to attempt it this time. Calvert's Ambassador to Libero. I got the feeling this is a bit more than a social call, though. I'm afraid so. Uh, throwing letter to Embassy PC. Ah, that letter, yes. You open the Royal Army investigate the matter, then? Technically, yes. Threats of terrorism aren't exactly something the guild can ignore, either, though. Would you mind helping us out? No, well, I suppose. We're well stuck into the situation, after all. What would you like to know? Well, uh, to start with, do you have any idea who would have sent that letter? Like, does anyone in the public oppose the signing of the pact, or... Well, of course. You're looking at one, after all. Excuse me, what? Huh? Elsa, please, try not to tease the kids too much, yeah? Well, the truth's the truth, Zin. I'm pretty sure I've chewed your ear off about Erebonia enough for you to know what I think, hmm? Well, yes. Still, Miss Bright, don't misunderstand me. President Rocksmith and Parliament have already approved the pact. My personal feelings won't get in the way of my job. Er, right. Is there anyone else from Cal Calvert who might oppose the pact? Oh, certainly! They're all tiny groups, though. To be honest, there's no real reason to oppose it anyway. No reason. I don't quite follow. It's not worth bothering. The pact doesn't have any practical effect. It's simply agreeing to the statement. We shall not rely on violence to solve international problems and negotiate instead. It's more of a declaration than anything else, but... It is a little more than a promise which can be broken without consequences, save a loss of face. You no. Know? Precisely. The worst they could do would be to rally other countries against the aggressor. Now, it's true that relations between Erebonia and Calvert have gotten even worse than usual over the past decade. So there is some value in establishing Libero as a place where we can negotiate. But again, who'd bother opposing that? Yeah. It doesn't really seem like the thing you'd send a bunch of threatening letters about. Well, Ambassador, I'm not going to say your name. 
If you don't believe someone from Calvert is a perpetrator, then whom do you suspect? <laughs> well, my gut, of course, tells me to blame it all on the Arbonians. They're military sick. Hawk faction, specifically. But frankly, even they have that new engine on the line. They aren't so stupid as to cut off their noses to spit in their faces. The new engine? Wait, you mean the one from the RCA? Yes, an engineering sample will be provided to both Calvert and Arabonia. It'll happen right after the signing, in fact. Whoa. Ah, as to be expected of Queen Alicia. She holds both Empire and Republic in the palm of her hand. Yes, I have to admit, she's handling this masterfully. Yeah! Yeah! That cutting edge engine is going to birth a whole new generation of airship designs. And Alicia is practically handing it out. So long as you sign this agreement and play nice with it, with it and each other, at least for a while. It's like, look, you play nice and you get fancy tech. Even the most testosterone poisoned ninnies among the Arbonian hawks wouldn't want to miss this chance. Did she really just call them ninnies? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yep, this game is definitely straight out of 2006. Yeah, I guess so. Which means, of course, that the possibility that either the Republic or the Empire interfering directly is pretty low. Indeed. So I can't be of more help. No, you're a big help. Just being able to cross suspects off the list helps a lot. Speaking of which, though, I would like to ask you about something else. About Ren's parents. Harold Hayworth, a merchant from Crossville. Hmm. Can't say it rings any bells, I'm sorry. Is there a visit to the emb embassy, at least? Darn, well, thanks. Do you remember that Crossville sits directly between Erebonia and Calvert, however? You may want to inquire at the Erebonian embassy as well. Okay, thanks, Ambassador. And thanks for being so open with us. <laughs> You're quite welcome. I'm glad I could help. By the way, you said your name was Estelle Bright. You wouldn't happen to be Brigadier General Bright's daughter. Oh, you know Dad? <laughs> of course. The Oro Vanquisher of the Imperial Army, and now the head of Libero's Royal Army. I heard he had a daughter, but I didn't expect to meet you like this. Er, um, well, I'm just kind of an inexperienced newbie myself still. You're off to a good start then, I think. With the Embassy, I've relied on the Guild a number of times in the past. Should the time come again, I hope you'll aid us, Miss Bright. Well, if the chance comes up, sure. Well, we'll see you around. Hey, You know that wasn't so bad! All right, to Erebonia! But first we have to stop by Libero. Cause that's how embassies work. Right, back home. Before we skip up to another country again. <laughs> Hello, Bergen. You've been well, I hope. Olivier? Where in the hell have you been? Why, I've been places, what's wrong? What's wrong, he says. You've been totally incommunicado ever since you went to Elmo. Major Vander's about ready to throw you out a window. Ah, he wishes to launch me like a love rocket. Adorable. Uh, Olivier, did you seriously forget to tell Mueller and the embassy you were with us? Uh, when wandering the roads hunting for love, one must be discreet and secretive. Fuck's sake, man! Well, Bergen, may we enter? I can't say no to you, but, uh, who's with you? Oh, we're from the Racer Guild. We'd like to ask the Ambassador a few things, if that's okay. Without, we try having Olivier introduce us. Oh, okay. Well, there should be a problem with letting you in, then. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Welcome to the Airborne Embassy. Do you remember that the Embassy is Airborne in soil, so be careful, yeah? We will be... Let's cross the border! Whoop. Damn, I can't believe I went to Erebonia so fast. <laughs> it's not even cold steel. This is quite the building. Whoa. This place definitely matches the Calvardian embassy in terms of fanciness. Grandiose and yet powerful at the same time. It's very imperial, if nothing else. Hmm. It is a stage upon which the Empire can parade its influence and power. Alas, that the actors are unequal to the set dressing. You realize Lord Cranag would hit the roof if he heard you say that. It's Mueller! Ah, my most bosom companion! Oh, fuck's sake! It has been an age. Are you well, dear Mueller? I would be better if I could cut you in half and be done with it. I told you again and again to ensure we're constantly aware of your location. You. Ah, but tis a tactic in the war of love. Did you know absence makes the heart grow fonder? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
Estelle, right, you have my thanks. I can only imagine the trouble this idiot's been causing you. He hasn't really been. <laughs> Actually, he hasn't been too bad, I guess. He's been really well-mannered, comparatively. Well, ignoring the lunatic, I presume you have business here at the embassy? Yes, sir. We'd like to speak to the ambassador. Yeah, later, right. I'd be somewhat concerned myself, but I'm surprised the guild is acting. This is a request for Brigadier General Bright in the Royal Army, I take it. Technically, yes, but we're trying to investigate it as neutrally as we can, you know. Nobody's guilty until proven, that kind of thing. Hmm, commendable mindset, no doubt why he chose you. Very well, I shall introduce you to Lord Ambassador Kranig. See! At least Kranig has a fuck as a name I can say! Select you'll find it easier to gain his trust if I do the introductions as opposed to a certain someone. Really? Thanks, Mueller. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, sir. Um, wait, you really have so little faith in me? Um, how do I put this? We have no faith in you. <laughs> you, uh, thought we had faith in you for this? See? See? <laughs> if you introduce us, he'd probably want to have us kicked out. Um, sorry, Olivier. Ah, the sting of being forsaken. The sting of the truth, baby. Lord Craneg is in his office on the second floor. I shall go announce your arrival. Give me a moment. We'll wait then. Ah! Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Uh... This is too much! Fancy! So this is the office. Wow. <laughs> Indeed. Shall we make our grand entrance and chuck the ambassador in silence? Mueller can totally cut you in half, you know. Apologies for the wait. Lord Craneg will see you now. Let's go then. <laughs> Someone should probably hold uh, Olivier down, and uh, I'm probably might need a gag, honestly. Welcome to the Airborne Embassy, guests. I'm Lord David Kranig, the duly appointed ambassador and voice of the Empire in this land. Um, I'm Estelle Bright of the Bracer Guild, Zin Vathek, also of the Guild. I'm Chloe Rain's second year student at Jenna's Royal Academy and assistant to the Bracers. And I am the servant of love and peace, Olivier Lenheim. <laughs> you. I heard you'd gone missing in Elmo Village. Try not to worry Mueller further, Olivier. Or me, for that matter. Such a strict dressing down. Much more, and I'll have to lose my jacket. <laughs> Setting that aside, you are here to inquire about the threatening letter, yes? What do you want to know? Okay, I'll be direct, sir. Do you have any idea who might be behind the letter? Is there anyone in the Empire who might oppose the signing of the pact? My, you are direct, young bracer. I appreciate that. I can tell you truthfully, however, that I can think of no such person. His Majesty is very happy with the pact as it stands, in fact. And no one within the Empire would be foolish enough to gainsay his leadership on such a matter, of course. Uh, yeah, I bet. So you think it's the work of someone outside the Empire, then? What other answer could there be? If you have an opinion, it's the opposition party in Calvert behind all this. Some silly ploy to make the president look bad, no doubt. Opposition. Doing whatever it pleases. This is a perfect example of the fallacies of mob rule. Huh, I have a question to that, uh, your lordship. Don't get me wrong, our major political parties basically beat each other over the head anytime they can, but even if the pact fell apart due to this, I don't think anyone could blame it on President Rocksmith. Details, you think the mob thinks like that? Pah. All I can say for certain is that the person issuing these threats cannot be from our empire. That should be more than enough assurance for you. Well, um, excuse me, Lokranek, may I ask what Chancellor Osborne's opinion of the non-aggression pact is? Oh! 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 Um... Ah, uh, that, that one's a little harder to read. You got the covert opinion and the overt opinion with Chancellor Osborne. That one's... Mm. What? Hmm. <laughs> Flawless repost, Chloe. Um, who? The highest appointed official f uh, of our most glorious and august imperial government. The Blood and Iron Chancellor, Gilliath Osborne. I love that nickname! The Blood and Iron Chancellor. Jeez. His nickname comes from his personal motto, Our nation's peace must be built on a foundation of blood and iron. He has overseen the expansion of the rail system as well as the annexation of several smaller states on our borders through less than diplomatic means. Annex, wait, you mean he... Olivier! 
How can you criticize our Empire's Chancellor? Oh, but Davil, how was I criticizing? I simply stated the facts. But calm down, it wouldn't hurt to be a bit more cooperative, no? We've already spoken with the lovely ambassador over at the Calvarnian Embassy. She was quite helpful, you see. What? Why, if we don't help these people now, it'll give them cause to doubt the character of Erebonia. Oh, boy. That would be a tragedy, wouldn't you agree? Grr. My Lord Kranig, there's no need to keep information related to this hidden. May I humbly suggest that being open in this case will not present a problem. Hmm, you have a point, Mueller, very well. To answer your question, Miss, Chancellor Osborne, like His Majesty, is most receptive to this fact. In fact, I hear he's actually the one who suggested His Majesty should sign it. Really? Hmm. That's because he's looking forward to getting the engine, right? No, apparently he recommended it to His Majesty before any mention of the engine. If anything, I'm glad there is harmony at home over this pact. There's been no pressure for us to negotiate. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Um... Though we do know that Osborne's all about the the prophecy uh, and thing dealing with the uh, Divine Knights, so... Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Hate to say it, Estelle, but it's looking like there really isn't any chance it's someone from the Empire. Yeah, it looks that way. Ambassador, thanks a lot for answering our questions. See, it was as I said. If you're looking for the guilty party, you should look elsewhere. Oh, but uh, one sec. If you don't mind, we have one more question. Mm, yes, the most pitiable situation, the separation of a child from her parents. Pale traders do visit the embassy at times, but... Merchant from Coswell? I do not recall such a man, no. Are you familiar with this Hayward, or Hayworth, Mueller? No, I've never heard of the man either. Really? Oh, this is starting to look kind of grim. Search at once for both a blackmailer and a lost child's parents. Sounds most trying. <clears throat> it may seem trite, but I do wish you luck, young lady. Uh, thanks, Mr. Er, Lord Craning. Now, let me show you to the gate, then. Imagine once you have a difficult time trying to find the culprit. Though I suppose if there were some clue, any clue at all, we wouldn't be in the position we're in now. Let's let us know if we can be of assistance. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Mueller. Talking with the ambassador was a big help. No, you don't need to thank me. I didn't do anything important, really. Besides, this is a problem affecting all our nations. We should be working together. Ha! Indeed. I do hope we can solve this. I mean, technically, we have... The firstborn of the Emperor of the, uh, um... Of Erebonia. The heiress to the throne of, uh, Liberal. And... A dude from Calvert. <laughs> it's just like the firstborn of the Emperor, the heirs to the throne of Libero, some random dude from Calvert. <laughs> I do hope we could solve this. Mm. Oh, Olivia, you're awfully quiet. Mm? Ah, it's nothing. I was simply lost in reverie for a moment. It doesn't concern our current business. Pay me no mind. Okay. Olivia, you'll be staying here at the embassy in the evenings while you're in, here in Gronsel, yes? Huh, where else? I would not miss the chance to have more sweet dreams in your bed as always. What? Oh my. Stop with the jokes before you give the ladies too many ideas and images. I mean! Push those jokes too far and I may have to spear you upon the embassy flagpole. Mm. Ah, so that's the direction I should approach from. You teach me more every day. Alternatively, I could just cut you in half right here. I'm fairly sure I could explain it to Lord Craning. That would be rather less lovely. Forgive the joke, my friend. <laughs> so that's how you keep Olivia under control. Maybe I should write this down. Ah, I'd say they match each other perfectly myself. That's a terrifying thought. Well, regardless, I should pardon myself here. Good luck with the rest of your investigation. Thanks again, Mueller. With the embassy's out of the way, all that's left is the barrel news. Hopefully Niall or someone will be able to help us. Hopefully, shall we be off? Wait, wait!
We got Calvert Embassy. Uh, Erebonian Embassy. Oh, I get it. Gronzo Castle is, uh... Okay. Gronzo Castle is on the way to La Barrel News, so we just stopped by because it's on the way. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, wait, what about the castle? <laughs> hmm? Say, you're the winners of the martial arts competition, right? Uh, yeah, that's us. Thanks for your help back then. Hey, no worries. So what brings you here today? If you're to see someone, that could certainly be arranged. Or do you just want to have a walk around the palace? That's okay, too. I'm actually, I'm here on bracelet business today. We should say, hello, Don. Dan. Alutz. It's been a while. Your Highness. Princess Claudia. We were not aware you'd returned. Uh, sorry to start you, too. I'm afraid I'm here on business, though. Estelle and I have some things in the castle to attend to. Can you let us pass, please? Of course, Your Highness. By your command, my lady. She, she just comes up and is like, hey, hello. And uh, calls them by name. It's like, oh, shit. It's the princess. Yeah, sure, you can come in. <laughs> They're like, whatever. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Only slightly popular, isn't she? I think I'm starting to get why that Duke guy is so jealous. Yeah, the guards love her. Now it's her, um, ladies Chloe in a cell and their entourage. <laughs> he almost said princess. Open the gate. So the guards are aware of Chloe's, uh, Secret identity, which... Fair. More than likely, that means that the last name has to do with, uh... The non... Royal... Relative... Uh, parent of hers. Which, I don't know if it's her mom or dad, but whatever. Please come in. Thank you, you two. Well, so Welcome back to my house, as it were. Come on in. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah, I just woke up back to my house. It's this giant ass fucking castle. <laughs> Where the queen? Gronzo Castle. Okay, time to nose around the castle a bit. So obviously we should talk to Queen Alicia. Both ask about the letter and just say hi. But let's see who else. Julia's gone, right? Yes, she's currently at Lyston Fortress overseeing the refitting of the RC. That's going to make things a bit harder on us. She probably could have given us a lot of help with this mess. Who else can we confer with, I wonder? With Julia absent, I think our best bet is Hilda, at least concerning Ren's parents. If they were to have ever visited the castle, she would know. Yeah, Hilda kind of seems to have some so sort of castle sense about these things. So where would we find them, you think? Grandmother should be in her chambers at this hour. And Hilda, hmm. She's in the maid's room. They can tell us where she is, at least. Good idea. Maid's room in the queen's chambers. Off we go. All right. Hmm. Mm. No. Mrs. Stell. And Miss Claudia. Mr. Zinn, too. Pardon me, it's been quite some time. Ah, <laughs> it sure has. Yeah, it reminds me of when you let me your maid uniform show. Oh, Estelle has a maid. Yeah, it was to meet with the queen. Oh, and Joshua had to wear one, too. She did her magic on his face with her makeup. She was all plumped, pumped up to do it. Oh my. Thank you very much. Joshua, who once played the role of Princess Cecilia so perfectly, also portrayed a maidservant. Oh, noble endeavors both. I'm sure it must have been quite beautiful to behold. You have no idea? And it almost makes me want to play uh, Trolls in the Sky 1 again, but I'd have to go all the way to the ending, which... Ain't no one wants to play the first, like, three quarters of a game just to play the last quarter. I got all the more I could not attend the Duke's banquet. <laughs> Alright, Shia, do you know where Hilda is? I believe Mistress Hilda is in the library. As I recall, she said she had something to look up. The library, got it. The fuck's the library? Oh... No. 
We're just gonna look through the entire freaking castle at this point. No. I appreciate sure these are all like bedrooms. Yeah, no. Fuck's sake. Where's the library? Is it this? Oh, it is this. <laughs> Princess Claudia and Mrs. Stell too. Hello, Hilda. I'm sorry if I startled you, but I just got back. Er, hi, Hilda. Sorry, I've been out of touch. It's quite all right. I'm glad to see you well. I understand the princess has been assisting you, Estelle. I'm very glad to see the two of you home safe. Oh, Hilda. Ah, <laughs> you're embarrassing Estelle, Hilda. Speaking of helping Estelle, though, I've turned partial inquire about something the guild is investigating. Could we ask you a few questions, Hilda? If I can be of assistance, ask me anything. I think there may be a few too many onlookers to speak here, however. Let us borrow a guest room. Yes, I see. Attending to the investigation of the letter we of that letter we received then. Tiggy wants to know if I have any idea who the sender might be. That's it, exactly. We're investigating all locations that received letters to see if we can ferret out some clues. Well, firstly, thank you for your efforts. Just receiving that letter was unsettling. I'm afraid I can be of little aid in naming suspects, however. The only thing I can say with confidence is that it is not the work of anyone in this castle. Yeah, we kind of figured that one. Who is the letter here addressed to out of curiosity? No less a person than Her Majesty herself. I checked all letters addressed to the Queen, so I know the context of the letter. Believe me, if I could lay hands on the rude fool who wrote that. Ah, pardon me. I was wondering, were there any other suspicious letters delivered to the castle recently? One's critical of royal decisions, for example. Ah, well. Hilda, please help us for my sake, if no one else's. We need as much information as we can in order to make a judgment. Very well. There have been several letters delivered with no indication as to their senders. They were not particularly critical of royal decisions per se. They were largely petitions to reduce or annul Colonel Richard's sentence. I suspect, at least, some are from citizens of Grandsell, but the rest I cannot be sure on. People want Colonel Richard freed, no less than expected of the man who once strove to be my rival. His popularity endures even after his capture and shaming. The Colonel was very skilled and competent, and everyone knows that. It isn't unusual at all to see people regret losing him. I personally bet on those letters not being related to our little threat. Requesting some of the royal ha something of the royal hand is one thing. Trying to force it to do something is a whole different thing altogether. Well, still, even knowing the letter exists, so... Oh, one more thing, Hilda. I want to ask about something else. Mm. Harold Hayworth, a traitor from Crossbow. Yes, I remember him. Say what? Is he an acquaintance of yours, Hilda? Not as such. He asked for a tour of the castle and interior a few days ago. I happened to be otherwise unoccupied, so I showed him about. His wife and daughter were with him as well. Really? Hey! Alas, this provides us with little clue as to where the Haywards may have gone. Yes, my apologies. There was something that bothered me, however. What would that be? Their gr child greatly enjoyed the tour. However, her parents felt as though they were barely even present throughout the entire thing. They seemed even-tempered and normal enough when they spoke to me. But when combined with your story, I wonder if they were under strain. Not able to pay attention enough to come in and play see a place as a tourist. It sounds like something was on their minds, alright. Yes, it seems likely they were in some kind of trouble even then. Hmm, this may give us a clue as to where they went. Thank you very much, Hilda. I think this gave us some good leads. I'm glad it could be of help. Oh, princess, you'll be staying here in the castle tonight, I trust. And if your friends lack accommodations, what? I said to stay here while in ground, so yes, but you know. Well, how about it, everyone? Ah, you forget, they're expecting me to be a pest at the embassy tonight, and I can hardly disappoint. Wait, this man even described himself as a... Okay, Olivier, why are you like this? I do appreciate the offer, however. Yeah, and I've got what's basically a permanent room at the Calvardian embassy. Thanks, but I think I've got to decline this time. I should probably ask Sharon and Tina before committing to anything. We've got Ren too. That's true. It sounds like she loves the castle. I should keep the rooms ready in case you wish to stay. Thanks, Hilda. Thank you, Hilda. Not at all. I must return to the maid quarters. Please let me know if you need anything else. If you pardon me. I love how all of the royal guard and all the maids and everything and everyone they just they're just oh they just know Chloe's Clo <laughs> secret. Okay, so we still need to meet with the queen. She should be in her chambers, right? Yes, I'd be surprised if she isn't. Let's not keep her waiting then. Uh... Her chambers would be the... <laughs> the room at the other end of the castle, right? Right? Or, well...
Are we talking about like the royal chambers, like the throne room and shit? Ah, you finally arrived. Uh-huh. Grandmother? Scree! What? Sieg? I see. Uh, Sieg was being thoughtful, wasn't he? Yes, you let me know when you were coming. Welcome home, Claudia. And Estelle, you're always welcome so long as I remain queen. Your father explained everything not long after you left the train. Pains me to know you carry such a burden. Oh. Um, uh, thank you very much, Your Majesty. Still, I know what I gotta do, and Chloe's been a huge help. So I'm okay, don't worry. Hmm, I see. Your soul has gained new steel since we met last, still. Mr. Vathic and Mr. Lenheim. Oh, and pause, Mr. Lenheim. She knows! <laughs> the queen knows! <laughs> Both of you, of course, are also welcome in my home. Let's retire to my chambers. I shall have some tea prepared. Ah, so you've come about the letters. I wasn't aware they had been sent to the cathedral and the embassies as well. Your fears are not groundless. It is difficult to think of such lengths as mere as a mere childish prank. Yes, your highness. That's why we're trying to talk to people affiliated to the case. To see if we can find some clues. Grandmother, do you have any idea who might be responsible? Especially someone within Libero. Hmm. Claudia, what do you think? Me? As a possible heir, your thoughts should... Daily be on the forces moving within our nation. Would you share your opinion with me? Very well. I don't believe there's any force in the country which is truly opposed to the pact. I've heard in various places, however, that following the coup, some of our extreme right-wing citizens are feeling very concerned. Their frustrations might be at the root of these letters. Maybe. Mm, very good. My opinion is more or less the same. Sorry, but uh, I don't quite follow. Alan, uh, Colonel Richard, was not the only man who approved the idea of expanding and empowering our military. In the wake of the failed coup, however, the matter is effectively untouchable. I can only imagine all who share his mindset are quite dissatisfied and worried for our safety. Okay, so, you think the letters are from believers in military control and expansion? Like the intelligence division guys on the still on their own? That would be the short of it, yes. If that is the case, then I would say I bear the responsibility for this as much as they. It's my beliefs that led them to take such action in the first place, after all. Grandmother. I don't know. I don't think they have the right to be all, Blah, let's threaten people and be scary because we're sore losers. No, there are a few things more precious than the freedom to express oneself, Estelle. Remember, even those who promote military empowerment and war footing do so out of a love for Libero and its people. They have as much right to express that idea as any of us have ours. And listening to all such opinions and choosing how to guide the country, that is the ruler's responsibility. Wow, so we're taking lessons on how to be a ruler from the queen. Fair. Though in that case, I rather doubt they'll actually try to stop the ceremony, yes? Assuming the letters from the ex expansionists, yes, that's quite possible. With Colonel Richard under arrest, they have little power with which to act. The problem lies with the idea that someone else may be responsible. If that is the case, then I fear I can offer you little advice or, chain or knowledge. Ah, uh, rats. Queen Alicia, if I may broach a question. Of course, Olivier, whatever you wish. Why are you so determined to act upon this non aggression pact now? Your own country is still deeply confused and unsettled from the coup attempt. Most rulers would think this is a time to focus solely on one's own country, not the affairs of others. Olivier, are you, you are talking to a queen, you know. It's alright, Estelle. Olivier has a point. The plan the proposals for the pact, however far predate the coup. Further delays would only harm the dignity of the nation. The crossbow issue is causing a great deal of friction again as well, and I hope this can help. Hmm. Crossbell, that's where Ren's from, isn't it? Yes, it lies due northeast of here, o over the Crone Mountains, and directly between Erebon and Calvert. Both the Republic and Empire claim it should be part of their governments, and some crossbellans want total independence. It's quite a mess. Crossbell is basically a fishbone stuck in two throats at once. All the issues surrounding it just get called the crossbow problem. I see. Boy, no wonder people <laughs> get worked up about it then. Ah, so your aim is to pluck out the bone with this pack then. To continue the analogy, it is not a bone that can be removed in one gesture, sadly. If I can open a way to resolve the issue, however, yes. Laying the groundwork for resolving that issue will strengthen peace across the entire region, and people remember the barrel spurred it on. 
<laughs> I have underestimated you even more than I previously thought. Our vision of Libero is far more of a fool's errand than I'd even imagined. That much, at least, is painfully obvious to me now. What are you going on about? Oh, wait! Crossbell Ren does! Sorry to change the subject, Your Majesty, but... Uh... My goodness, a child abandoned at the Royal Villa. I must instruct Raymond to keep me better informed, it seems. I know it's a shot in the dark, but I don't suppose you have any idea where they might be, Your Majesty. No, I'm very sorry, but I do not. However, if they visited the castle, especially recently, Hilda would know of it. Have you spoken with her? Yeah, we did. Hilda only said that they were behaving a little strangely. I see. Well, should you wish, I can contact Mayor McDowell and the Crossbell government. If that would help, ask whenever you need. Oh, uh, thanks. Grandmother, thank you for all your help. We need to move on, unfortunately. But, um, don't be nervous. I know what you wish to say, I think. You'll be staying in the castle tonight, yes? Let us speak then, once you're no longer busy. All right. My god, it's such royalty. I'd say she's the only person on the continent with that sense of balance. Yeah, sort of feels weird to say coming from a democracy, but she's the perfect ruler. Kind of envy Libero, to be honest. <laughs> of course, she's the queen after all. Chloe, what's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. I was just struck again by how incredible a woman grandmother is. I really doubt I can ever live up to her. Oh. Mm, princess, when did Her Majesty the Queen take the throne? Hmm? Oh, she was 20, if I recall correctly. And may I ask your age? I'm 16, but what? Ah, <laughs> my point. I truly doubt Her Majesty was a master politician the day she took the throne. And you are not yet even as old as she was when she first donned the purple. I see little point in comparing yourself to her as she is now, wouldn't you agree? We martial artists tend to say that only those with the proper capacity can achieve this thing called unity of purpose. Even those with the greatest innate skill, like, say, Walter, only reach their peak through a journey of a thousand steps. I think Her Majesty believes you have the capacity to get there, Princess. Just take it one step at a time. Don't worry. Olivier, Zin, thank you, really. Good job, you two. Chloe's going to be an awesome queen someday. I guess you get good with pep talks as you get older, huh? Mm hmm? Get older? How rude. I'm a fresh, youthful 25! <laughs> Five years younger than Zane here, even. You want to call out someone on being rude, Olivier. <laughs> well, anyway, we've spoken to Hilda and Grandmother both. Yep, back to town then, I guess. Yes, let's be off. Okay, before we go back to town, I'm going to be our back.
Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Oof. All right. Next, we gotta speak with the boy. My lady Claudia, if you're looking for a badge, the queen's she's currently resting in her room. Please pass through. Do 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 do. It's Chloe's future throne. It's like, what? Why are you asking about? Oh, <laughs> I love that. I love Chloe coming to the end. It's like, oh. Evening already. Time does fly when you're having fun. The only letter victim we've yet to visit is the barrel news. Yep. Well, let's not waste any more time, eh? Let's get over there and see what's what. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold the phone. Can I just... Oh, I can't just willy-nilly enter the castle. That's annoying. Uh... Okay. So we can go to the east block to go speak with Anton for the billionth time. I really wish they would let us go into the castle whenever we want. But, you know. <laughs> Makes sense that we can't. Evening sun, dyeing the white clouds such a brilliant scarlet color. And me, such a small piece in the grand scheme of things. Hey, Ricky, I, who am so insignificant, what should I do? Why don't you try running after the evening sun? Not sure how much it'll accomplish, but you might find yourself feeling better just from the flow of things. I <laughs> mean... Not wrong. Alright, let's go to the liberal news in the West Block. Whoop, whoop. We go speak to the boy. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Niall. Hello. <laughs> Who in the hell? Well, what do you know, you guys? How you doing? Good day now. <laughs> Pardon our intrusion. Oh, it's that bard guy and our your highness. Or er, good day to you. Yeah, you even have Zin the Immovable of Calvert with you. You got kind of a gang going here, still. <laughs> Lots of stuff uh, happened since we met last. How'd your coverage of the election in Rwanda go? Damn well, that's how. Got the article done. Thanks in part to you guys. Speaking of, what brings you by today? Got a hot scoop for your old buddy now. Well, actually, we're the ones who'd like to know something. Where the Liberal News received the threatening letter? You guys investigated that thing. I figured the military would have been taking care of that one. We're working on a request from the military, actually. So, do you know anything? Well, I just got back to the capital, so I don't know much. To be honest, I'd like to hear what you guys know, if anything. That's real helpful, Niall. Come now, you're a newsman. A hound for a good story. Surely must have a clue as to who our villain is. I don't have time for this. Um, that's a bit impolite, you two. Niall, I know this is a lot to ask, but please, if you know anything at all, share share it with us, please. Whoa, hey, your highness, you don't need to lower your head to me for crying. Fine, fine. <laughs> it's like, what? what, what, what? It's like, oh, boy. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm crying out loud. Fine, fine. Okay, so this is off the record, but we ain't the only ones who got a letter. Not even close. Lysa Fortress got one, then the cathedral, the airship company, the Hotel Rombaum, and then both embassies, Grunter Castle, and the Air Royal Villa all got one, too. There are nine letters in total. Oh, something wrong. Er, Niall, we heard that from the military already. What? Damn it, that was my big scoop for the day. Doesn't look like we're getting much out of this. Yeah, time to move on, I think. Now you wait just one second, Missy. You keep talking like that, and Niall Burns, star reporter for the Barrel News, is gonna have a name worth the pile of crap. All right, all right, let me lay you in on my take of this whole mess. Well, okay. You may want to be brief, Mr. Burns, if I listen up. Here's the short of it. My gut tells me this is some kind of huge prank. The threats aren't real. 
We thought of that too. You sound off as sure though. Mind telling us why you're so convinced? Okay, trick is, I've covered terrorist threats like this before, right? But with this, there's no reality to the threat. Threats only work and have power if they describe, or at least imply, something nasty that's gonna happen, see? These letters have exactly none of that. Mr. Burns does have a point. Disaster will be visited upon you. Does not offer much in the way of a specific terror. Yeah, um, you spilling coffee on your shirt is a, in the middle of a peace meeting is a disaster, but like... At the end of the day... Eh. Exactly. I've got a hunch this isn't about stopping the signing ceremony at all. This is more about getting people worked up over a threat and then sitting back and watching the fireworks. I see. That's kind of a good point. There is some sense behind it. I'm still bothered by the fact that so many letters were sent though. And each and every one was sent to a place involved in the ceremony. Yes, for a prank, whoever did this seems to know a lot about what's happening. That does seem kind of true on the surface. Think about it though. All that info would be pretty easy to find with a little digging. Hell, I knew about those places weeks ago. Anyway, I'm going to be working this on the assumption that it's a prank. Maybe you guys should stick to your guns about it being a real threat and we can compare notes later, eh? Yeah, good idea. Thanks, Dal. That actually helped a lot. Darn right it did. Just stop by if you want to stop stories. I'll be sitting around here until the pact signed. Okay. Oh, speaking of sitting around here, I don't see Dorothy anywhere. All right, she's off working the Bose region. I sent her to stack some photos. What, for a special of some kind? Yeah, related to the Royal Army. You remember that old fort the Sky Bandits were using as a base, right? The one you guys busted? The army decided those rats had the right idea and have claimed and repurposed it as a training facility. They're running airship pilot training out of there now. Oh, okay, neat. So she went off to get coverage of the base then. That's the idea, yeah. I was a little worried about sending her out on her own, but gotta do it sometime. Dorothy out on her own, huh? Scary. Oh wait, duh! Speaking of girls out on their own. Uh, what's up? Harold Hayworth, a trade from Crossbow. Hmm, never heard of the guy. Pretty sure he's never been in our classifieds or our wanted column either. Figures. But hey, this is part of the job, right? If you guys are totally stuck, I'll help you out. We can put them up in the classifieds if you want. I even have a few people in Crossbow I can poke. Thanks, Dial. Uh, <laughs> you're way more reliable than I thought you'd be. I think I need to upgrade my opinion of you. <laughs> of course you do. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Was I not reliable before? <laughs> Just kidding. Alright, let's get back to the guild house then. Sherazard should be back by now. Hopefully, yes. Thank you again, Oh, eh, It was no big. Come by again anytime. We're back! Welcome back. I'm sorry, I know we're a bit late. Hey, where's, where are Tita and Red? They returned just before you did. I believe they're enjoying the spoils of a hard-fought shopping campaign on the second floor. Sounds like they had fun. Anyway, we got a lot to report. Yes, please. I see. Sounds like you had a fairly productive day then. I guess we didn't get anything decisive though. Shara, did you find anything? I managed to find a very large pile of nothing. The hotel, the cathedral, the airship company. No one had the size clue as to who would send such letters. Leader of the airship company is deathly afraid the sender might demand money next. There haven't been any follow-up letters though to anyone. Damn, doesn't really narrow things down much. How likely do you think it is the society is how likely do you think it is the society's behind this all this? I don't think we can safely say that at this point. Their primary focus up until now has been experiencing those bizarre gospel ornaments they possess. We know the Gospels can create phenomena otherwise unimaginable. The device certainly haven't shown an ability to create threatening letters from nowhere, however. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't really seem like it matches the society's MO. Huh, I guess Rowan and Zeiss just had me on edge. No, it's perfectly understandable. Regardless, I think we could safely say we've done our part. Compile all your testimonies into a report. Could I ask you to deliver it to Colonel Sid at the Air Royal Villa tomorrow? Sure, we didn't find the sender in the end, so I feel kind of bad, but I guess it's all we can do. Oh, Herb. Right. Shara, did you find anything out about Ren? I did have some results on that end, though. Not in the way I expected. Let me start with the hotel. The Haywards, all three of them, definitely stayed there for about two weeks. They kept the same room for the entire time, in a fairly typical tourist fashion. It was only just this morning that they checked out. 
Okay. I then visited... I then visited the cathedral. It seems the Haywards came to worship a number of times while they were here. However, the father who ministered to them said he felt there was something off about their behavior. They seemed distracted during prayer specifically. That would match what Miss Hilda said. Yeah. And finally, the airship company. That's where things get very strange. The strange how so. Their names are Harold, Sophia, and Red Hayworth from Crosswell, yes? There are no records of anyone matching those names, nor that nationality, and the records go back six months. No way, but... That is a mystery, though perhaps they traveled by land. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That can't be right. We first met her. She was talking about landing in an airship. Yes, at Air Lenton. She said she saw a lake on the way down. Hmm, troubling. It's possible they were traveling under assumed names. Assumed names, why would they? They may have had something to hide, or they may have been hiding from someone. Either way, they must have known something was wrong before they set out. I've contacted every guild branch in the country about Ren's parents. For the moment, all we can do is wait for more information to come in. As for Ren herself, I think it'd be best if she stayed in the care of the guild for now. Yeah, I'd feel terrible if she got wrapped up in something. Could you leave her with me, baby? This mission kind of feels personal now. I was going to suggest that actually, thank you. The guild will pay for everyone's lodgings while you're in Grand Sil, naturally. That includes Ren, so don't worry. Thanks, Ellen. Oh, wait! Speaking of staying the night... We don't actually need that tonight, you see. My, that's quite an invitation. It is. Honestly, I'd absolutely love to stay there again, but I'm afraid I'll need to decline this time. It'll be far easier for the guild to reach at least one of us at the hotel. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. We might hear something about Ren's parents. I guess I should stay at the hotel too then. Sorry, Chloe. Uh, no, don't worry. I'll explain the situation to Hilda. I'm sure she won't mind. Zin and I are to stay at our respective embassies. Princess shall retire to her castle, naturally. So that means you two and the girls will be staying at the hotel then. Mm, parting on these terms would be dreadfully dull. Since we're all together this evening, shall we enjoy a nice dinner at the bar? Good idea. And you know, I'd actually like to hear you play the piano again, Olivier. It's been a while. Ah, sweet maiden, you know just how to pluck my heartstrings. Have you come to appreciate and mature flavor at last, I wonder? <laughs> Olivier! I'm going to snap those heartstrings if we keep it up. Snapping or no, we should get going. With the group this large, it could be hard to find seating. Alright, let's call the girls and be off. That evening, Stell's group and Ryan had dinner at the Sunny Bell Inn. Olivier, as if it were second nature, took to the piano after a few drinks. Ultimately, even Mueller and Niall were called to come and join. <laughs> so past the pleasant evening, Grunzel. I'm dying. Okay, let's flip here then. Chloe, be careful on your way home. Uh, it's not that far. I think I'll be fine in the capital. Huh? Miss Chloe, you live in Grunzo? Um, yes I do. I'll be staying at my grandmother's house. Well, if you'll pardon me. Have a good night, Chloe. Good night, Chloe. Ren doesn't know. Oh, that's adorable. Wow, that was one egg of a party. Olivia even dragged pure Mueller into it. And who was it that dragged poor Mr. Burns into it all, hmm? Not that he seemed to mind. <laughs> well, I figured, what the heck? Ren, did you have fun? Yeah, yeah, I did. The food was good, and everyone was talking about neat stuff. And the piano music was really pretty, too. Yeah, Olivier is really good at it. I was kind of surprised. Well, he's not all hot air when he calls himself a traveling performer, I guess. Sure you want to duck out already, Cheryl? Zin and the others are still having a lot of fun. Professional courtesy, Estelle. If I stayed, you, you know I'd just drink them under the table. Since we do have work tomorrow, I thought I'd cut out early and spare them the pain. Fair enough. Let's go get our hotel rooms then. Pardon, are you the bracers and company we are expecting? Forgive me, but we were unable to secure a four-person room for you. Would you be willing to accept a pair of two-person rooms? Oh, sure. I don't want to split them up, Cheryl. I'm fine with any arrangement. Set up however you please. I want to be with Mrs. Stout. You've been busy with work, so we haven't had any time to talk at all. No fair, Ren. I want to be with Estelle too. Then you should have said so sooner, Slowpoke. I know. What if all three of us stayed in the same room? We could share a bed. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'll let you borrow Estelle for tonight, Ren. Thank you, Tina. Um, I think I just got a horse traded. <laughs> you do have a way with the ladies, Estelle. Well, that leaves the two of us, Tito. How about I show you a few tar uh, tarot cards? 
uh, card games before we settle in for the night. Okay. Ugh. Oh, wow. This room isn't like the one I stayed in with Papa and Mama. There's a big building outside the window. Oh. Mrs. Stell, what's wrong? Er, uh, nothing really. More importantly, I'm sorry, Ren. We couldn't find your uh, uh, Papa or Mama today. It's okay. Papa and Mama promised they'd come get me. You don't need to search so hard. But Papa and Mama are very good at hide and seek. Not as good as me, of course, but still good. So I don't think you'll find them very easily. Huh, <laughs> is that right? Well, I won't try so hard to find them, but only if you're okay with it. Yeah, it's okay. It's for the best. But never mind that right now. I have two big favors to ask of you. Oh, what's up? Uh, I can't tell you unless you promise to do them ahead of time. Yikes, did your papa teach you to drive a bargain like that? Okay, sure. If it's something I can do, I promise I will. Really? Yay. The first thing is... Can I call you Estelle from now on? Huh, call me... Oh, you mean drop the whole mess part? Yeah. Tina gets to call you Estelle all the time, so I don't want to have to call you Mrs. Estelle. Huh, is that right? Alright, I don't mind. I never stood that much on formality anyway. It's not like I'm your teacher or anything. So you really don't mind. Estelle, Estelle. Oh, I love it. Uh, glad you like it. Call me Estelle as much as you want, Ren. Okay, Estelle. Hey, yeah, that makes me happy. No, that's good. So what was the other thing, Ren? Oh, yeah, well, can you tell me why you were so surprised when you came in the room? Ah, you had this really sad, lonely look on your face. I want to know why. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. See, I've actually stayed in this very room before with someone else. Stepping in here just reminded me of him. Really? Was it your lover? Was this your lover nest? <laughs> Fuck's sake, Ren. <laughs> oh... Uh, uh, not quite. It's someone I've known for a long time. We've gotten very close, but well, it's complicated. We're not together right now, though. Ooh. Well, what kind of man is he, huh? What's his name? What does he look like? Yikes, questions. His name is Joshua. He has black hair and amber eyes, and he's pretty handsome, I guess. Actually, you'd really call him more beautiful than handsome, really. Huh, beautiful. Let's just say he made a great princess in a certain play. In fact, it looked amazing on him. Wow, that sounds fun. Can I meet him? When are you seeing him again, huh? I don't really know, actually. Oh. You don't know when you'll see him again, and that's why you look sad, right? Sort of, but I'm okay. I'm going to fight him and drag him back home, even if it takes years. Why did you seem so sad? Well, because I'm sure Josh was off somewhere in way over his head. I can't do anything to help him. That makes me sad, I guess. Sorry, Ren. This must be pretty boring, since you don't know Joshua at all. No way, it's neat. Joshua's a really wonderful person, huh? Wonderful, actually, right now, I think he's... A bit of a jerk. I mean, talk about selfish ways of saying goodbye. Taking my first... First what? Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, what? No nothing at all. Okay, yep. I'm all tired. Time to go to sleep. Hey, no fair. I'm not going to sleep until I hear the whole thing. Boy, I messed that one up. Just tell her. That cell run went to bed, but remained awake for a little while talking about various things. Eventually, once she could hear nothing but Ren's slow, peaceful breathing, cell gave in to the exhaustion which a been piling upon her eyes and fell into sleep herself. Abandoned mine. <sighs> Bingo. Yep, looks like we found our rats. So they're holed up in the old mine, huh? Not a bad spot, all things considered. It's where those sky bands kept that ship they hijacked, right? I think so, yeah. The cellar team ended up fighting the bands in the big central hollow a bit further in. Ah, nice. A nice big open space, huh? Better guys are in the same spot. So what do you think? Go in for the heroic charge now or... Yeah, we don't have time to contact anyone. No heroics though, at least not yet. First we sneak in and take a look at how many men they got in there. Right, behind you. Ah, uh, yes. That's weird, this is definitely their hideout. But where the hell is everyone? Yeah, we totally tracked them here. So where'd all those intelligence weirdos go? Hmm. They might have figured out we were onto them, but ah screw it, let's have a look around. No good, this place is an empty shout. Do you see anything, Agate? Not a freaking thing. 
Can't even tell if they're just out or if they ditched the place or what. Not even a clue as to where they went. Um, about that, I didn't find any mention of where they were going, but I did find this over in that tent. Oh, yeah, let me have a look. The hell is... These are blueprints of some kind. Looks like it's for something called the Orgil. Kinda looks like a vehicle of some sort. Ooh, Orgil, sounds cool. What is it? Some kind of airship. I can't really tell. Seems a bit small for one. What the? What's wrong? There's some kind of note in between the pages. I've sent out the invitation. I got the table and chairs ready. Everything's ready for the tea party. Now I need to bake some crumpets and wait for the guests to arrive. Aw, a tea party. That's real cute. It's like something out of a storybook. Hmm, some kind of code, I guess. That doesn't mean, though. Tea party. Gotta be some kind of... Scatter! Ah! No way, how'd they sneak up on us? <laughs> Those are some serious stealth skills, guys. That's another trick you learned from Lieutenant Red. Oh, maggot? Yeah, I see it. There's something wrong here. Okay, faint to a side. Crush one cor corner of the triangle. Then we'll take out the rest. You ready? Leave it to me. Go! Okay. Okay, hmm. What's with these guys? I mean, we beat them, so whatever, but that was a strange fight. Do you think they were on drugs or something? Remember hearing they used something like that to control some thugs in Rouen, I think. Nah, that was different. This this was like a hacking at a stone or... Haha, <laughs> what great fun. You two aren't half bad, are you? What a treat. Campanella. You. Huh. I'm enforcer number zero, Campanella the Fool. I am but one hand of the society of Ouroboros. Oro. Fire side of your face, huh? Just what's your scheme, anyway? What the hell are you planning on doing with what's left of the intelligence idiots? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm little more than observer this time. You're asking the wrong person if you want details about the plan. In fact, I barely know them myself. An observer, the hell? Anyway, if you want to attend that tea party, you better hurry. I'm not quite sure where it's being held, but it is in here. Or shall we say, share some coffee instead and enjoy the dawn together. Um, kid, you look pretty young. Are you really part of the society? I don't mean to be insulting or anything, but you might want to get away from them. They're bad people. You're very kind, miss, but you know, it's okay to laugh at a fool. That's what he's there for. But worrying about the fool? Now that's quite rude. Huh? What? How the hell? We beat them senseless. Ah, you bracers really are naive. If you really want to defeat someone, you have to break them into pieces. Like so. She. You little. You, you, that's, how could you? Did I surprise you? It's so easy to break even a well-made toy, isn't it? But I'm afraid that's the end of the fool's show for tonight. Farewell, hopefully I can give you an encore someday. Get back here! 
<clears throat> Agate, um, I know. They weren't guilty of any crime so bad they deserve to die like this. We can't leave them here. Just laying around. Hey, go kill some time somewhere, alright? Kid like you doesn't need to deal with this. I'll take care of it. But, but... What? The hell? Um, Agate, I think this arm is fake. You're kidding. Gears, springs, quartz fragments. These things are archaisms. Orwell machines capable of independent action. What? And who are you? Don't worry, I'm no enemy. I'm Kevin Graham of the Septian Church. You're Agat Crosner or Annalise Elfied, right? I don't suppose you'd be up for swapping some stories, would you? Okay. Yikes, that was scary. West Bowes Highway. Rah! Kyle, you're up. Here I come. Josette. Okay. Joshua. More robots? Impressive as always, Joshua. <laughs> you three were impressive too. We defeated them in a single sweep thanks to your combo attack. Cut it out. Flatter will get you nowhere. This is like the 10th group, isn't it? How many more do we need to hunt down? Hmm. This should be enough. The Royal Army should move soon, so it would probably be best for us to disappear. Right then, I really gotta stop. I, I, I'm trying to make it make myself sound as dead as possible inside when I'm reading Joshua's um, dialogue, but I don't know how good I'm doing it. Still, just what is the society trying to do? Why use these dolls dressed up as Richard's goons? That's the real question, though. Where are the rest of the intelligence men? They've probably gone to the tea party in that note. The dolls are likely to distract the army from that and make them think Richard's men are still active here. Mm. Makes sense, I guess. Wish we knew what the hell the tea party was. Well, we don't have that much of a reason to help, but... I'm sure you don't want to crash that tea party. The bracers should be investigating that camp by now. We can leave it to the army and the guild. Yeah, we left them the note and plans. That'll be more than enough. I'm going to take care of all these freaking puppet things while the guild's busy. We could just leave the rest of that to that airhead in our group, right? Or, sorry. Didn't mean to pick up at an old wound or anything. No, you didn't. They have nothing to do with me anymore. Once the tea party begins, the army will be focused on that. We can move once that happens. Right then. Time to get busy. He just looks dead inside. The next day, SL went to the Herb Royal Villa to give Sid the report and the letters. <laughs> I see, the support is very thorough. Thank you very much. You investigated this quite well, I guess. I'm still kind of miffed we couldn't find out who sent the letters, to be honest. This is more than enough information for our inv initial investigation. I doubt we'd... I doubted we'd uncover the party responsible for the threats at this stage, anyway. <laughs> if anything, this gave me exactly what I needed. Information to consider what we might need to defend against. 
Thank you, Colonel. So how have your, your preparations been going? We finished our initial deployment yesterday. We'll be using the villa as a patrol headquarters until the signing ceremony is concluded. So that's why there were so many soldiers out and about. I'm guessing that's why there were, like, no monsters on the road over here. We conducted an extensive monster hunting sweep this morning. We'll be forming them periodically until the ceremony ends. Why, Colonel, keep doing that and you might just put us out of a job. Huh? Well, you have something of a point. Speaking of civilian concerns, about that girl's parents, the ones you mentioned yesterday. I haven't heard any reports that they've gone through any of the regional gate posts. Nuts, nothing to do but wait, I guess. I will let the guild know the instance we are anything. For the moment, you've done fine work with this investigation. I'll have your payment wired to the guild ASAP. Thanks, Colonel Sid. But, uh, what should we do now? You want us to help out with the patrols in the capital once we get back? Well, if you plan on staying in Rodso, I wouldn't turn away the help. I do know you're very busy with other matters, however. I won't insist on you staying. Hmm. Well, still have rent situation to deal with, so we'll talk to Ellen about it all when we get back. Yes, that seems like the best idea. Sir, excuse me, sir. Belk, what's wrong? Er, don't worry, these people can be trusted. Very well, sir. We've received a phone transmission from headquarters at Lysted, sir. Remnants of the intelligence division have been sighted in the Bose region. What? You're kidding. Details, man, explain. They were first sighted by some bracers. I'm afraid we don't have all the details on their confrontation yet. However, General Bright has ordered all army stations to stand by at level 2 alert. I see. Thank you, Mr. Belk. I suspect we're going to be fair, busy fairly soon. Seems like it. Estelle, we should get back to the guild at once. Right. Colonel Sid, good luck with your patrols and stuff. Stay safe, friends. Please give me back control. Okay. That... It's going to be it for today's stream. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my voice is given out. So I need to take like 15 minutes before I go back into work. So I'll be back. Uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, if not tomorrow, hopefully Friday. And if not Friday, I will be back for sure Saturday. In the early hours of the morn. <laughs>